Okay, in a sense, it is true because it is the how to, it is development of MIS areas. However, TPS transition over TPS is continuing in the form of AIS, in the form of a system analysis. So, system analysis technique and accounting and information, uh, EDPS auditing, uh, electronic data processing auditing system is a sort of a continuation of TPS. So, uh, there are uh, two uh, subtopics uh, in, if you want to learn TPS, which is AIS, accounting information system, and system analysis. In MIS, okay, this is smaller than, narrow than MIS. Okay? And, uh, <coughs> basically, nature of and characteristics of information concept and uh, in the information and computer information value and requirements, and information needs, and you know, functional MIS. Basically, there are two subtopics in MIS. One is the nature of MI information. What is the information? Why do we need the information? You know, what is the role of information in the organization? What is the role of information in the, in the company? Kind of thing. The second subtopic in MIS, you know, is uh, uh, the functional application to uh, MI, uh, the functional application of MIS. What that means is how to apply MIS <coughs> to uh, fun, uh, marketing and finance, except accounting. Accounting is a strong area, so I classify differently already. Uh, AIS belongs to TPS, continuation of TPS. So except accounting, uh, say uh, fun, uh, the operations management and the finance and the uh, marketing, there are several other functional areas in management. Okay. So uh, again, there are two sub-areas in MIS. One is the nature of information. Second is the functional application of MIS. So those two areas, basically, you know, from my definition, uh, by my definition, it's sort of managerial MIS. It's uh, focusing on uh, uh, system analysis, accounting information system, which emphasizes uh, cash flow and the functional application of MIS. And then, uh, if you look at the second page, and the DSS and AIS, in those two areas, what in my terms is technical MIS. Uh, as opposed to uh, manager, managerial MIS. So um, uh, D, uh, DSS, you know, I explained several times, in, actually is in the under exam, what is the three components of a DSS? Database, data model base, and dialogue system. So database theory, you have to learn database theory, database management system, mathematical models, model based theory, model based management system, dialogue system, human machine interaction. Human machine interaction is obviously dialogue system. And ergonomics, ergonomics is human factor engineering. How can you design your menu, uh, your screen, in order to, uh, in order that human fit, human uh, fit that uh, environment? What that means is human beings must not feel any, uh, uh, shouldn't be get tired after two or three hours working with terminal. Uh, the uh, human beings shouldn't be tired. So how can you design it? That's a human factor engineering. And the group DSS, this is a new emerging area. And uh, not only just single DSS, how about many people get together making group decision, uh, what we call is group DSS, group decision support system, some architectural aspect of DSS. This is highly technical area. And then when we get uh, the final area, AIES, artificial intelligence in general, in RG representation, rule based production system, predictive <coughs> logic deduction, and this is uh, also highly technical. And, uh, may not, you know, understand some, some technology, even. But, and then also uh, neural network, all distributed processing, basic mechanical psychological process like that. Well, my area, if I introduce my area, is, is a DSS. You know, my dissertation, is everything, my research papers, publications is uh, concentrated on DSS. I'm expanding my area to AI and DSS. So basically, I am a technical MIS person. So if you want to learn MIS, you probably have to decide yourself technical MIS or managerial MIS. Uh, basically, there are two big, uh, you know, juncture and big two classification is technical MIS and the managerial MIS. Technical MIS covering DSS, AIS, and uh, managerial MIS covering TPS, accounting information, and system analysis, and kind of, you know, first of two areas. I think uh, I went, I have typed out uh, yesterday night, I was pretty satisfied because nobody uh, really classified MIS uh, in, pretty, uh, in that terms. So, uh, 
MIS obviously is very confusing area. A lot of people don't understand what MIS is. Maybe the computer science is MIS or what is that? If you look at the, some journal of information systems, that is a kind of a, a flip flop case in some electrical science. So uh, people believe that maybe electrical science information uh, is electrical science is information system. So now, and then uh, you have a you know general idea. Then what kind of courses you must take in order to learn MIS? Okay. Uh, courses, basic tools, intermediate tools, and advanced tools. I classify. Well, I'm not saying all these 20 courses are available in at OSU. Uh, it, it, some of the courses are not uh, available here. So, but I'm pre providing all kinds of courses possible, possibly a student should take in MIS. Okay. So uh, some of the courses may be offered in computer science in, at OSU, or some of the courses are offered in business school. Maybe some of the courses are not offered in, at OSU. Uh, basic tools of programming, computer fundamentals, and uh, data structures, discrete mathematics, mathematical modeling, accounting theory, introductory management concept. Intermediate tools, system analysis, software engineering, data communication, database, and logics, introductory AI, including neuroscience and research methodology. Advanced top tools, MIS functional application, decision support system, expert system, neural networks, accounting information system, managerial impact of information system, advanced system analysis. But you cannot take all of the 20 courses because too many. You know, 20 courses is really, too many. So the uh, I gave you, I'm giving you a sequence of courses by track. Okay. So there are four tracks. I gave you four tracks. DSS track, which is my track. You know, in my area, DSS track. If you are interested in DSS. You probably take the course 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11, 16. If you are interested in artificial intelligence expert system, you, you may take 1, 2, 4, 5, 12, 13, 17. If you are interested in AIS, accounting information system and system analysis, then you can take 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 15, 18, 20. If you are interested in managerial track, or well, managerial track is a uh, uh, I, I need to explain this. Manager trade is sort of, uh, there is a one area uh, to study what kind of impact, what kind, uh, what kind, what kind of uh, impact can information system make on the map organization, okay? Uh, the University of Minnesota and Minneapolis is uh, the, the famous, most famous school in that area. So uh, interestingly, the, uh, the PhD student in University of Minnesota don't know how to run computer. They never touch computer because you know it's very strange. Because it, it, when you declare your major is MIS, you're not supposed to learn you know how to run computer like that. But they never touch computer because their MIS is different. What are, is they study uh, what is the uh, effect of uh, information system on uh, some organization or management. So they uh, circulate some anking, some kind of questionnaire. Say, do you feel comfortable with computer? That kind of thing. Do you feel with comfortable with automation? And then you know they uh, collect some uh, data, and then they analyze it statistic statistically. So it's, it's different MIS. So if you like that kind of MIS, uh, probably you like it. If you are not good at mathematics, and then you can take the course two, seven, eight, fourteen, fifteen, nineteen, twenty. So uh, I'm not saying all of these 20 courses are available at OSU, Oklahoma State University. Maybe some of the courses may not be available. Some of the courses may be offered in computer science, kind of thing, but you have to you know, follow by yourself. And so I hope this is a good introduction to you, those of you who want to learn MIS. Maybe if, when you go to graduate college later, and you probably, uh, this probably give an idea of how to learn MIS later on. Any question about the about this introduction?
Today is a, I'm gonna wrapping up fix, uh, the uh, index dissipation file. We stopped it the between because we didn't have a handout that time. So I'm gonna finish this one and then uh, the, uh, cover the, the input control issue and then we'll get into chapter nine today.
is uh, the last uh, largest key is in the first day is 14, and the largest uh, key in the in the first trade in overflow area is 14. So the, the fact that this number is the same as this number means that there is no no overflow in the no record in the overflow area for the track one. Okay, we uh, explained that. Yeah. So uh, again, I'm going to say again. The, uh, the fact that this number is the same as this number means there is no record in overflow area for track one. Right? We don't know about track two, you know, unless we look at this. Right? But we are interested in track two uh, at this moment. We look at track one. The question is, this is an indexed sequential file after first addition of a primary track. So we are going to add a new record, which is, uh, see, originally, the, uh, the last record was 14. The, the key of the last record is 14. The next uh, to the last key, uh, the, uh, the key of the next to the last record is 11. Right? And like that, 9, 11, 14. So we, we have inserted uh, the key 10. Right? We have inserted the, the key 10, the new record, which, whose key is 10. So we inserted it, and then 11. Originally, uh, the 11 was here. 11 was shifted to right, right. And then this guy kicks the, uh, the record 14, okay? Is that actually record 14, uh, what I mean is uh, the, uh, the key of that record is 14. Okay? This uh, record is kicked out to be placed in overflow area, right here. Okay? So key is 14. Well, Again, 255. 255 is just arbitrary number. Okay? And when, when by agreement, if I say 255, that indicates somewhere outside, somewhere from outside, indicating that there is no further record anymore. So when uh, the certain record has a 255 for the point, uh, the, the pointer for the next record, automatically it means there is no more record. Okay? What is this? This is the only question is left over. Yeah, 431 is, this is 43rd, uh, 43rd track, because assuming that, that uh, the prime area, area consumed 42 tracks, so uh, this is 43rd track, so 431 means this is the first record of the 43rd track, so 431. Now one thing we have to change is this one. Okay, the, the original was number is 255, indicating that no, no further record, no further record in of overflow area. But now we have uh, one record in overflow area, so we put 431, which points to the, this record. So, uh, first of all, uh, if somebody asks me, find out, find out, retrieve, <coughs> retrieve or find out the the record whose key is 14, I probably scan around, okay, I probably scan around, when I cannot find it, probably look at the uh, overflow area using this pointer, okay, so look at the, this address first, and whether or not the key is 14, may not be 14, probably 13, because there are two more records between here, uh, 14 and 11. Then you look at the next one using this pointer, this pointer must not, must not 255 in that case. So uh, that's, uh, that's the situation. And the next, next one here. Is, We are going to add one more record, which is uh, uh, whose key is uh, the uh, what's that? The 13. Whose key is 13? Yeah, we are going to add one more record to this file. So what's going to happen is we cannot insert this in prime area because the, the last key, uh, the largest key in prime area in the track one is 11. So 13 is obviously larger than 11. So we cannot insert this here. So we have to put some air. The one thing you have to notice is the, uh, when you insert a new record in the uh, prime area, 
you, you have to find out the appropriate price by you know the descending order. I think it's ascending order, right? From one to the ascending. Okay. In you know, ascending order, you know, ascending order, you look at it. And so, for example, if I have a record whose key is five, you have to insert here because this is, the key is four and the key is six. So we have to insert this price. So by that sense, this must be in front of this uh, record because the key of this record is 14, the key of this record is 13. So this record must be in front of this record, but it's not the case in, uh, in overflow area. Overflow area, whenever you receive a new record, you just add it in, at the back. Right? So uh, because uh, it's, it's by the policy, by policy, you put this record just at the back. So physically, this is the last in, uh, the first in first, uh, you know, first place the, uh, by sequence. But logically, logically, it should be, this should be, no matter what, this should be in front of this record anyway, because this is the key of this record is 13, the key of this record is 14. So how can you figure out the logical addition? This is in front of this record using pointer, for example, we put 432. 432 means the second record of the 43rd track. Okay? So this looks to the second record of the 43rd uh, track. And then if you look at the point of the next record, which is 431, which means the first record of the 43rd third track. So this points to this record. And then the key is put. And then look at the, the, the uh, point of field for the next record, which is 255. By agreement, we understand. Whenever we, we encounter 255, this is the end of the train. So that's it. Okay. Somewhere, uh, with, somewhere uh, there are some, uh, some record which, uh, whose address is 255 or 999, either way, any, any arbitrary number, which is empty now. So uh, yeah, whenever we have 255 or 999, any arbitrary number by agreement, and then uh, we understand this is the end of the, you know, Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the 43rd track mm -hmm. is record number 2. Uh. We have to go in front of the 43rd track of record number 1. Logically. Yeah, because the key is 13. Right? Yes, the key is 13. Yes. Logically. But physically, it is at the back. Well, this is in front of this record, physically. But logically, uh, it should be in front of this because the key is lower, uh, smaller than this, this one. Because we are sorting and uh, ascending more. But this is a IBM style uh, index sequential file, and uh, you know, obviously IBM is dominating force in computer area industry. So uh, I think there is enough reason to introduce IBM uh, architecture. But maybe uh, different companies and different systems may use different architecture. Yeah, it's a, uh, just this is a brief. Uh, interruption uh, of uh, input control because we can cover this uh, simply because we didn't have a hand up that time. And, uh, we resume we resume into validation technique. I don't know, I think I showed this transparency but I'm gonna show again. Okay. So we're gonna resume this uh, Again, input validation technique, there are two techniques, examination technique and check digits. Okay, so input validation technique, the examination technique, you look at the input, you look at the transaction, and to see whether or not it, that is uh, regional. Is that uh, range of the uh, value is reasonable? You know, is the sign of plus minus is reasonable? Say, the income, income minus 500, it doesn't make sense. You know, income must be uh, plus. That the positive value, not negative value, kind of thing. And the check digit is you intentionally add a certain digit to track the validity of your transaction. Okay, this is, idea is very similar to uh, the uh, parity check system. Uh, I think I asked you the other time how many of you have done parity check. So parity check is a, uh, when uh, data is transmitted uh, 
sometimes it, the data is uh, consists of many uh, bits, okay, 0, 1, 0, 1, like that. And uh, sometimes it, the electronic is a mistake. Um, you probably believe that the electronics is perfect, uh, which is not. Electronics can uh, commit mistake. Uh, the reason is there is a uh, technical reason because of uh, its pulse and uh, certain uh, ranges plus and so one and such range is zero and then so the sort of range error is possible. So uh, the parity check uh, uh, introducing very brief, briefly, for example, one one like that, this is a you say DC code. This decode consists of four digits. I think the binary code decimal uh, system. And uh, no, this decode is six digit, right? The six and five. This is six and the F is eight and the uh, ASCII code is seven, right? So uh, <clears throat> and uh, for example, this uh, odd parity, odd parity system, say, uh, the, uh, if you add up the uh, digit 1, we have two digit 1. So but if you add up the old digit uh, 1, it must be odd number. So uh, this is a parity, uh, parity here in the odd parity system, parity here right here must be one. So uh, there are three ones, right? And we put this one, three, three ones. So one, two, three. So this is odd number. So in the odd character system, the number ones must be the odd number. So when when uh, this is has been trying, well, this is in, for example, in the secondary story, in the disk pack or whatever, and it is transferred to the uh, main memory. You need this uh, data to the main memory. And then uh, if there is any electronic uh, uh, problem, whatever, and the, when you check the, uh, this data, uh, this bit, uh, this character, uh, happen to be 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, like that. Okay, so this, this bit has been changed to one, and, and the answer is right. Okay. This has not been okay. All, all bits are okay except this. Okay. So there are four, four ones. Okay. One, two, three, four. So obviously this is wrong because in the other system, the number one must be odd number. Right? This is an even number. So we understand there is something wrong in the uh, transferring data. Okay. This is how to track computer, how to check the, uh, in the trans transferring error or okay. <coughs> But this also has a setback. I mean, what kind of setback? If two digits are changed simultaneously, for example, this has been changed. Okay. Obviously, this is wrong, but uh, there are three ones. Three ones, because this one will be so uh, the mistakenly, if you understand that there is nothing wrong, which is wrong, because uh, there, uh, there are two mistakes. Right? So when two mistakes happen simultaneously, you cannot uh, detect it. That's a problem of parity check. But you see the problem. What is the probability of uh, a uh, the, uh, that? What is the probability that two bits are changed simultaneously? Maybe uh, one out of a million. Right? So maybe you know multi-million. So that doesn't really matter in that case. The generation technique and check digit uh, generation techniques are based on assumption that certain types of error are best detected by checks uh, made of the data by looking at the data items or transactions. And check digit performing operations that add extra digit to the data. Uh, 330, 330, 331, 
So that is the uh, section for supplement to one, supplement eight, the input validation techniques. Uh, I don't think you have any uh, big problem though. when you read this through. Uh, you should be under, it should be understandable. So you should be able to understand these sequence checks and batch totals and formal checks like that. Actually, I have prepared some transparencies, but. Basically, what I did is I just uh, summarized the, what is in the book and add my thoughts on it. Uh, because in time uh, limitation, we're going to skip this. Uh, so I encourage you to read the, the pages, uh, page 30. What? That's not clear. Uh, yeah, uh, this one or that? Check it. Check it. Performing operations that add ADD. Extra digits. Let me get into chapter 9, and uh, today and Friday, and memory, you know, we're still behind the schedule, and uh, chapter 9 is database management system. Uh, this is the, uh, the, among the techniques available in MIS, uh, in my opinion, the most important technique. Uh, well, as I say at the beginning of the class, there is managerial MIS and technical MIS. Okay. If you look at technical MIS, the importance the most important technique is the database. Obviously, there are other techniques and uh, model-based, uh, you know, modeling techniques, uh, interaction dialogue systems, and some expert system, and artificial and neural networks. And there are several other technical you know, uh, tools in, in, in technical MIS. But database. Even database is important in managerial MIS. When you, in the managerial MIS, you analyze the system, and you look at the cash flow, and the draw the flow chart, the data flow diagram, and uh, sometimes you understand the database concept. How, how can you store the data? How can you retrieve the data? How can you utilize the data? So, uh, Let me uh, introduce very briefly what the database is. Database is a uh, Actually, I have a handout, but I'm going to hand, uh, give you the handout, the, uh, another handout for chapter 9, which is supplement 1. Uh, you know, in this, if you look at the syllabus, I'm, I'm supposed to give a, the supplement 1 handout uh, during the chapter 9. So, uh, actually, I prepared it, but and it's, because time is not enough for the recovery, so we're going to have to give it uh, on Friday. So, when you miss the class, by the public issue, they get a, a copy from your friend or from me. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, database database the, uh, integrates the collection of data stored in different record types. The records are uh, interrelated by means of relationship in the data, not the physical uh, storage location. Okay, so the concept of database is not physical storage concept. It's more like the conceptual, what we call is uh, the conceptual. So 
So uh, let me use this word. Continuous restore, which is nice. Uh, it's a database is it's a more conceptual uh, level, not the physical level. So we are not interested in physical level because when you store a database in the in the computer, you look at you know bits and bytes, and uh, what is the storage method? What is the access method? Like that? This is more physical. Yeah, that is a matter of some electrical science and computer science. So we we are, we are looking at more like a uh, conceptual level of database. And uh, uh, traditional file brochure database. Traditional file brochure database. We have explained some traditional files, like uh, you know, we actually sequential file and direct access file, and those files are in a sense is uh, traditional files. And also we explain MIS, traditional MIS and transaction processing system, you know, the 50s and 60s. They normally use transition file and I'm sorry, traditional files. So what is a database? Database came out, say, uh, middle of the 60s and uh, late 60s. Okay, why? Why database? Because yeah, the, uh, if you look at the transition file, uh, if you look at transition file, is a uh, traditional you know, tape, okay, so that you understand this is more like a transaction file. This is some application program, say uh, application program. And then the output.
the data is, is stored without duplication. Okay. So uh, the basic philosophy database, okay, this is a traditional file system, okay, BP. Basic philosophy database system is integration and sharing. The integration, integration of data and, uh, and the sharing of data. The uh, two major purposes of database is integration of data and the sharing of data. And uh, how to integrate data, how to share the data. Okay. Actually, in the file system, they do not share any data at all. They, they, uh, each application program keeps each separate file. Okay. There, there are some advantages, actually, because if somebody, some, uh, you know, I have a separate file, you have a separate file. You know, there are a certain degree of data redundancy. You know, obviously it is, it is inefficient, but if you lose your file for some reason, still you can get some information from me because I have uh, some uh, data for you. So in a sense, it, it's, it's good. So uh, you probably have heard that distributed database, distributed uh, system. In, in the distributed system, uh, the people try to allow certain uh, degree of redundancy. It's this very interesting idea. So in the 50s and 60s, it has a lot of data redundancy. And 60s and 70s, 80s, people try to eliminate data redundancy. And then recently, since five, six years ago, and uh, what they call is DD, uh, DDB, distributed database processing, is trying to uh, go back to old days. I mean, is uh, a certain degree of data redundancy may not be vice. Maybe uh, good. Uh, then the question becomes: What percentage of data redundancy is best? And, and kind of, this is a really complicated issue. That, that uh, something uh, hard to bear with. Uh, you know, start here today and uh, uh, stretch your mind.